And then we'll let fucking the next act on. So we, so the next act is known as Alan Graham, but we've been calling him Death Slot the entire night. <laughs> well, <my laughs> oh, I brought him from methyl, from fucking methyl, <laughs> for this. So this man has about, is it a six hour trip, road trip? Road trip, Six hour road trip, so please love him to death. <laughs> very, very funny, very, 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 Christmas Day jumpled. The wonderful, the fantastic, please go mad for Mr. Alan Graham! Peter Griffin, everybody! Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have an opening line. One guy gets ironic paradoxes, that's fine. Um, I won't do the other one. Right, see that? That reaction there. Oh, is this what this is going to be like for 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this, this is what this is. Too much. Anyway, it's over. There's not another one, it's fine. We'll move on, we'll move on. Like Graham was saying, I'm from Methyl, and um, I've, I've, well, a six hour round trip to get here, but it's worth it to be not in Methyl. Um, <laughs> uh, I used to live in Edinburgh as well. I lived in Edinburgh for four years, and I moved home to Methyl after I graduated. And if you're wondering what that's like, Living in Edinburgh, moving on to Methyl. It's like the end of the Wizard of Oz, when everything goes from being in colour to black and white again. <laughs> <laughs> Living there is, how can, I, how can I describe it? I'll go for some uh, pop culture references to try and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll hit with one another. Um, it's like living in an experimental Stanley Kubrick film that has got so at hand it has become real life. <laughs> it's like living in um, uh, it's like living in Manhattan Island prison in Escape from New York. It's like living in um, a perpetual 1984 episode of the docudrama Threads that is set in Yorkshire and centres around people living in Britain after a nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> okay, I thought one of those would happen. Loving in the Oh. Yeah. Hey, you can fucking fight your fashion, aren't you? <laughs> Good, that's over. Cool. Um, Pablo mentioned um, Bill Cosby earlier on. Um, and the whole Bill Cosby rape thing, you know, it's, uh, it's typical, isn't it? We have something in Britain that's really popular, and they just have to do their own version of America, don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, Jesus. Um, I'm glad I filmed this. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> we've got a, new, um, got a new First Minister in Scotland. How are people feeling about Nicola Sturgeon as First Minister? I'm um, ambivalent. Oh, you're beating me the punchlines. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about Nicola Sturgeon, right? Not because I don't, I don't think she's great. I mean, I don't think she's great. But I worry, I worry about the SNP now that Alex Salmond's gone. Okay, because Alex Salmond, I mean, whatever you think about him, he was a very charismatic guy. He, could, he, could, he was a very good talker, he could uh, convince people to do what he wanted, and they're good qualities in a politician. And I don't think that Nicola Sturgeon has those qualities. For instance, um, when she first found out she was going to become the new First Minister, a genuine quote, she was asked, what will you do when you become First Minister? And she says, I'm going to focus on the things that are important, like fairness, jobs, and people's money. Now those all seem reasonable, I'll grant you, but maybe I'm being picky, but I don't feel comfortable handing the leadership of my country over to a woman that doesn't know three of the four E's of politics, namely equality, employment, and economy. If she asked the third one, the uh, fourth one, education, she probably just went, that thing I've never been involved in at any point in my life. <laughs> Interestingly though, fairness, the first thing she said, fairness and equality, not the same thing. Yeah, they have like overlapping definitions, not strictly the same thing. Want to talk about fairness? Maybe it's not entirely fair that you ran unopposed for the First Minister position in Scotland. <laughs> I mean, surely there must be somebody else that could have ran with her. Somebody qualified to lead the SNP. A couple of names spring to mind, you know, you could add Richard Herring, <laughs> Jackson Pollock, Lance Bass, <laughs> Michael Fish, you know, on the nose. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> 
the thing is though, the thing about Alex Salmond leaving, I'm worried that without him, the SNP will struggle, that they could wither politically and die. And you think that's quite ridiculous? It's not. Look okay, at this way. I don't think the Nazis ever won an election after Hitler went. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the exact figures, but I don't think they even won a, a local by-election even. I mean, you know, you never hear the Nazis anymore, do you? You'll never, you'll never kill them in video games. Maybe in 70 years we'll have Call of Duty SMP zombies. <laughs> where you run around Hollywood shooting double chins off Alex Salmon's decomposing corpse. <laughs> and then you kill him as a zombie. <laughs> so, um, obviously Christmas is approaching, as you can tell by my jumper. And um, has everybody heard the new Band-Aid single? Yeah? Oh, shite. Yeah, that's shite, you're right. Um, everybody familiar with the song, you know, though, yeah? Obviously, yeah. do they know it's Christmas? It was written uh, by mid-year 1984. And I think now, obviously this is now the sort of third release here, I think it's starting to show its age. I mean, you just listen to the song, and I think you could sort of tell there's very subtle things in the lyrics that let you know it was written in the 80s. I'll, I'll go through it, just so you can... Uh, <laughs> Rose, sing it! <laughs> just, so you can, um, just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll just do some of, the, some of the lyrics, right? Okay, so you've got, it's Christmas time, there's no need to be afraid. Blah, blah, the, the first verse. It's more the second verse that starts uh, getting it. It was, um, there's a world outside your window, and it's a world, a world of uh, Thatcherite capitalist reform. <laughs> <laughs> and the only water flowing comes from a privatised source. And the Christmas bells that ring there are played on a synthesizer. <laughs> well, thank God, tonight is them instead of you. And there won't be Rubik's Cubes in Africa this Christmas time. <laughs> the greatest gift they'll get this year is Return of the Jedi on VHS. <laughs> no land where nothing grows, no rain or rivers flow. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? And blah, 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 feed the world. Do you know it's... So, I mean, <laughs> you may pick up on some of them, but there was very subtle, sort of, you know, shows it was written in the 80s. And I thought that I would take the liberty and maybe update the song. Uh, to be more contemporary. Um, so I've, I've got to go at it. Um, it's Christmas time. There's no need to be afraid, except for all the wars. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, the, the rest of it's kind of solid up until... Um, and there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. Global warming makes that an impossible scenario, less likely each year. <laughs> the greatest gift they'll get this year is a portion of the aid from this song rather than charities entrusting it to the local warlord on the assumption that he will distribute it and then instead of them, they just use the money to buy a solid gold Mercedes. <laughs> For what is a band-aid than a quick fix to a painful and bloody problem? I like that, but we question there for a minute. Um, oh, where nothing ever grows except cotton, maize, coffee, chocolate. No rain or rivers flow except the Nile, the Zambezi, the Congo, the Niger, the Limpopo, the Val, the Bando, among others. I'm sure they know it's Christmas time, as to suggest otherwise would imply that African people are ignorant and unable <laughs> to differentiate between one day and the next. Uh, feed the world, let them know it's Christmas time again, except the Muslim African nations, who do not celebrate Christmas and would likely take the forcing of a Christian festival down their throats as an act of provocation. Um, so, uh, <laughs> So I sent that to my Jew and I said, you know, what do you think? Maybe, um, maybe you mentioned the pop, you should maybe do that instead. And he said, look, it's great, obviously, but um, we've already re released it this year. What we'll do is, we'll keep it, we'll release it next year, uh, next, sorry, in 10 years, for Band-Aid 40. I was like, that's great. But in 10 years, Africa though, will more than likely be one giant Amazon warehouse with billions of employees working zero hour contracts and forced overtime. And then the African people will face a much worse but eerily familiar set of problems. Okay, it's a good place to leave it. I'll be right. It's been lovely. Thank you.